What is going on guys? Jason Burke here, Styles Clash for Life, coming at you on YouTube and today I've got some football focus. The Pittsburgh Steelers just played the Philadelphia Eagles in week 5 of the 2020 NFL season. Uh, obviously I was not here last week, uh, Pittsburgh was playing Tennessee but they got a bye week because of the Titans COVID outbreak. So they got an early bye and they're going to make that game up I think in week 7 or 8 when the Steelers bye week was going to be. So uh, very you know unfortunate for the Steelers. You don't want to have a early bye week, especially when you're 3-0, you're starting to roll, and you're feeling pretty healthy. You do not want to come in there and slow yourself down. My will get slowed down, and then, you know, you got to play 12, 13 games in a row to end the season, and then you, you get injuries and you have no time to rest, all that stuff. So overall, not the best situation for the Steelers, but because of the COVID outbreak, you got to be safe. Better safe than sorry. So Tomlin doesn't seem to mind play in 12, 13 games in a row to end the season. So the 3-0 Steelers came in against the, I believe, 1-3-1 Eagles. They uh, won one tie, 1-3-1. But they, uh, in spite of being 1-3-1, they were first place in the NFC East because the NFC East is a bad division. Uh, but they came in, as usual, Philadelphia has been banged up for like two straight years now. They're injured every single week. Uh, they, they came in without their top two receivers and Alshon Jeffrey and... Um, Deshaun Jackson, and uh, it didn't honestly make a difference. Philadelphia still moved the ball. They still got down the field. The passing game was still effective. Uh, if I were to tell you the score was 38-29, you might not believe me. Uh, this game should have been very easy for us. Philadelphia being uh, one of the weaker offenses in the league and Pittsburgh being one of the better defenses should not have been a 38-29 game. If I would have told you that Pittsburgh would score 38 points on offense and still be fighting for their lives in the fourth quarter, you would think I was crazy. Um... But that's what this game was, was a shootout, and uh, Pittsburgh's defense had a bad day. Uh, offensively, we had a pretty solid day. We did score on, I think it was five of the last six possessions until the until the running out of the clock. So Pittsburgh played really well, especially after the like first two possessions. After that, they got it together. The two biggest problems that we faced were the offensive line and, um, and the injuries. Um, because of... Coming into this game, uh, Chuck Socorro 4 was starting. The offensive line is a little bit banged up. Uh, David DeCastro did get injured in this game and did not return. That is a huge injury. He is uh, 1A and 1B, are tied for best or second best offensive linemen out there, uh, along with Pouncey. DeCastro is a Pro Bowl staple on this team, and if he's hurt, we're in a lot of trouble. This line's already kind of patchwork coming into this season. We lost a few guys in the offseason. Now we got Chuck Socorro 4 and Mount Filer starting, and now DeCastro goes down. So we are we are in some trouble um, offensive line wise. Not to mention, besides the injured offensive line, we also did not play uh, did not have Derek Watt at fullback today. He was injured today, so he did not play, which meant that the running game did not get going at all. Uh, the running game was not really effective. When your line is beat up and your fullback is out, you're, you're not going to run the ball that well, which put pressure on Ben all day, um, which caused two things. It caused a couple of sacks to put us in take us out of rhythm put us in second and third and long, and also it caused penalties today. We had three uh, three penalties today. Uh, the rookie had two, uh, one illegal downfield and one holding. I think um, I think Filer had a holding as well. We had three or four penalties on, on the offensive line today that kind of stalled drives and put us in difficult spots. So the offensive line did not play that well, and the injuries and penalties did not help our offense. But even still, with all that being said, being a one-dimensional kind of offense, we found a way to make it work. Uh, 38 points feels pretty good. We we ran effectively two particular things. Number one, it was a lot of motion. We used a lot of motion, especially McLeod and Claypool coming across the formation. And we used a lot of reverses with them. We used a lot of uh, gadget plays. We used a lot of handoffs out of that out of that position, uh, which resulted in a lot of positive plays. The motion confused Philadelphia, kept them on, kept them on their toes. Excuse me, and also unveiling new weapons. Uh, not only was this Chase Claypool's breakout game. We'll talk about him a lot today, but Ray Ray McLeod as well made a lot of positive plays on offense. He is going to be our new speedster, our new gadget guy, a possible screen guy. I like what he added to the offense today. So two kind of unlikely additions to the team really broke out today and helped the offense in the motion and the short passing game really work well. Uh, so that was a big positive. Defensively, we had a rough day in coverage. Oh my goodness, Travis Fulgham needs to buy some some real estate here in Pittsburgh because he owns the Steelers. Travis Fulgham was kicking our butts up and down this field. Uh, if you don't know who Travis Fulgham is, welcome to the club. Who the hell does? 
Uh, but you might know his name after this week because this guy might be something special. He caught a game-winning touchdown for Philadelphia over the 49ers last Monday night. And today against us, he caught 10 passes for 150-plus yards and a touchdown. He was looking good across the middle. He was strong. He was breaking tackles. He was high-pointing the ball. He was running his routes and getting out of his breaks fast. This guy looked like an absolute star, and I don't know whether that's because the league has no tape on him and we didn't know about him coming into this game and didn't expect much and got, you know, underestimated him, or if he really is, you know, that good and he's just going to be an emerging star for this team because he looked so good out there. Uh, Steven Nelson uh, got lost on a few breaks with him. Mike Hilton couldn't cover him whatsoever. Joe Hayden had some trouble as well. Hayden did eventually cover a little better toward the end of the game, but, but all three of those guys... In coverage today, had some trouble. Nelson, Hayden, and um, Mike Hilton all had trouble. Greg Ward also caught, caught a touchdown as well. There was a tight end catch over the middle from Jalen Hurts that wasn't covered well. Uh, Terrell Edmonds didn't cover very well in the pass. I think even even on the, on the one touchdown over the top, I think it was to Greg Ward, where Mega Fitzpatrick even, even got beat. I'm not sure if that was his coverage or whether that was his own coverage, but pretty much everyone in the secondary had a hard time covering today. Uh, not that great. Also in the run game, um, pretty solid uh, run day, but I've got some pretty alarming stats. Miles Sanders did get, I think it was a 70 yard or might, might've been 60 plus, but I think it was closer to 70, 70 yard breakout for a touchdown. Miles Sanders ran big time on us. That's the biggest running play I can recall us giving up in a long time. Also, Miles Sanders had a one yard touchdown on a goal line play as well. So two rushing touchdowns for the Eagles on top of all of their passing exploits. So big days for Fulgham and for Miles Sanders, who's a hometown guy. So welcome back to Pittsburgh, Miles Sanders. Those two guys played very well and way better than we all expected them to. So this game really became a shootout, and what it came down to was um, the, the Eagles couldn't cover Chase Claypool. He's getting the big game ball today. We'll talk about him again. But uh, the Eagles couldn't cover the short passing game. The motion confused them. The, the, the quick plays, uh, a bunch of guys made quick plays. Uh, on offense, James Washington had several several short catches. Juju had a couple of nice hands catches, even though he had very small day statistically. Uh, Claypool was the main guy today. Ray Ray McLeod caught a few. The short passing game over the middle and allowing guys to break tackles and make plays really hurt the Eagles. And uh, defensively, we eventually got a bunch of sacks. We had five sacks today, and uh, we didn't have enough pressure for the for the most part in the game, which allowed Wentz to eat us up with some some pass plays. But we had enough pressure in the key moments to hold them off. So Pittsburgh was able to out Philadelphia with the combination of short passes on offense and finally getting enough pressure on defense, which caused some bad plays out of Carson Wentz. Um, let's get to the stats today. Big Ben with kind of, kind of a somewhat of a quiet day, but it's hard to say quiet with three touchdowns. Um, Big Ben, 27-34, to 34, very efficient passing day. Again, using a lot of short passes. 27-34, to 34, 239 yards, three touchdowns, no picks. Um, he got sacked a few times, got pressured a few times, but relied again on short passes. Didn't blow the world away, wasn't slinging the ball all across the field, but he made the plays when he had to. He found Claypool, especially their chemistry, got really, really good this week. Made the plays when he had to, three touchdowns, and no interceptions is the big number there you like to see. Ben staying healthy and not throwing picks makes the Steelers win a lot of games. James Conner didn't really get it going, but did score today. 15 carries, 44 yards, and a touchdown. He had uh, two plays. I think they were inside draws that were really solid. Uh, but aside from two little runs, didn't do anything else today. Not a good rushing day for him. Uh, again, no fullback, offensive line hurt. You can't expect too much out of him. McFarlane got a few carries for nothing, really. Snell got a few carries. Uh, got a first down at the end of the game to end the game. But other than that, um, nothing much out of him. Ray McLeod, though, I got to say, two, two rushes for 63 yards. He had a big one. He almost broke for a touchdown. He, uh, he caught a few short passes where he made a few plays. I think he had three short catches today. Um, also, the, the one long run on the, uh, the inside handoff on the motion play, McLeod is going to be a nice, nice guy on the outside. Throw, him, throw it to him quick. Let him make some moves with his feet and break tackles. Let him do end arounds. Let, let him do uh, you know, some, some inside handoff stuff. He's going to be a nice, fun addition to this fast-paced offense. Uh, so big shout-out to him and a game ball for him. And the biggest game ball of the day, Chase Claypool. Seven catches, 110 yards, and three touchdowns, plus a rushing touchdown. So four total touchdowns for Chase Claypool. He scored in all four quarters. And he's the first rookie in what's got to be almost 40 years to have four touchdowns in his first season. 
Claypool got a lot of playing time because Deontay Johnson once again was injured injured very early in the game. Uh, he's had a really rough start to the season. I, I had big high hopes for him, but he really has had a rough start these first four games. He had uh, fumbles in the first two opening two weeks, and then he's had injuries in the early quarter of the last two weeks. So not not doing very much out there. Juju again very quiet as well, but. Claypool, again, 7 for 110, three touchdowns. He had a rushing touchdown. He was doing everything. He was catching short passes over the middle and broke one for a long touchdown across the middle. He caught a ball actually on the sideline, high-pointed a deep ball. He would have had 30 more yards on the day, uh, but that was called not a catch because they said he didn't tap his whole foot down when I thought he did, so he could have had more there. He also caught another ball. Uh, he came back on a, on a cutoff route. He came back, caught the ball, broke a tackle, and got a, another touchdown. He would have had five touchdowns in this game. That was called back on offensive pass interference. So that 110 and four touchdowns could easily have been 160 and five touchdowns. So what a monstrous day for Claypool. Strong hands, quick, going up and high pointing the ball, catching in key situations, breaking tackles. He's vibing with Ben. He's doing everything. This guy broke out major today. He's playing a lot like Juju did did in his first couple of seasons. Very impressive. Again, offensive line majorly down today. Eric Ebron down today. He did catch a few balls, but uh, he had one catch that he made where he caught it and then fumbled on a key fourth quarter possession. And then the next possession, he had a big catch in traffic that he could have got a big first down on that he dropped. That was initially called an interception somehow and then was called back. So two big drops, including one fumble for Ebron. That is not what you want to see out of him. He had those issues in Detroit. But he's been dropped free here in Pittsburgh so far until today. Not a good game from Eric Ebron. Defensively, sacks, there were five today. Again, there were times we didn't get enough pressure, and that showed because the back end could not handle us covering today. But the front end did get some pressure. We'll see here. Stephon to it. One and a half sacks. Cam Hayward with a sack. TJ Watt with a sack. Mike Hilton with a sack out of the slot. And Bud Dupree with a half sack. So five sacks total. Some of the usual suspects there. Uh, two more. Turnovers for the Steelers on defense today, but both by Steven Nelson, who needed those. He's been having a down season so far, and even today he got beat on some plays. Uh, Warden Fulton got, got him a few times. So uh, this game wasn't the best game in the world for him, but it was the best game of his season so far. He got one nice interception where, where Wentz just threw completely off. Um, Vince Williams bumped the receiver, and uh, Nelson read it, got down, and, and made a nice catch for the interception low. So... A uh, nice bump by Vince Williams that caused the interception. Carson Wentz on the bad read there. And the second pick was a Hail Mary in the fourth quarter. It was, it was like uh, fourth and 13 or something. Wentz just threw it up. And Steven Nelson went up in traffic and then found the ball. So two nice plays for Steven Nelson there. That's the kind of game that he needs to bounce back. Uh, we still have a lot to work on. We uh, we got the win. It was too close, just like it was last last time, last game. Uh, kind of ugly at points. We, uh, we have a lot of things to work on. We have injuries now with Deontay Johnson. Um, Derek Watt, DeCastro, we got to get healthy. That's one of the things. The offensive line has to clear the penalties up, and the defense has to make sure we worry about getting our coverage in check because Travis Fulgham might be a solid receiver we didn't know about, but he did way too much today. So we have things to fix, but nonetheless, we played who we played. We got four victories in, in you know, week five here. We, we skipped the week, sorry. Uh, so we are 4-0 now. We are one of, I think, Five remaining undefeated teams in the NFL. I think the Chiefs might have just lost as I'm recording this. Not sure of that score yet. So there are either five or six unbeaten teams, and Pittsburgh is one, one of very few. So we're feeling good about that. As long as we can stay healthy and play smart, we've got quite a ways to go. Playing Cleveland next week, and I'm looking forward to that game. So tell me in the comments below, what did you think of this game? Who get your game balls? How impressed are you with Claypool and Travis Fulgham, actually? And tell me in the comments below what you're expecting for next week. So... Go Steelers. I'll see y'all real soon.